Hi, I'm Jason, and this is the Pattern to Print channel. And in this episode, I've got a few things. First, um, kind of a big announcement. I'm going to be at the Bay Area Maker Fair next month, so that's going to be pretty exciting. I uh, found out from Merit Matter Hackers that they had opened up a late registration or a late, um, you know, entry process, and I was able to get my grandfather clock approved for an exhibit so I'm going to actually have a table and I'm going to have my clock there. So it's going to be kind of an adventure over the next few weeks figuring out how to ship it there in one piece. Um, I am going to fly out a little bit early so I will be attending, uh, barring any weird airline issues, the uh, Matter Hackers meetup on the Wednesday before the, uh, the Maker Fair and that's going to be a great great gathering. Uh, lots of people are going to be there. Um, Maker's Muse is going to be there, and Joel, and Lauren, and all these really kind of people that we all kind of watch on YouTube, so that's going to be, that's going to be really exciting. i um, like to bring my clock to that, but I, it's, uh, the logistics of uh, getting it from Orange County to uh, the Bay Area on Thursday might be, might be too much to overcome, but we'll see. I haven't quite given up hope on that. So anyway, so if you're going to go to the Bay Area Maker Fair, uh, please stop by. I don't know quite yet where my booth is going to be, but I'll certainly probably post that on Twitter um, if uh, when, I, when I find out when, where that is. Uh, second thing is that uh, I have a new camera. Um, we're going to be taking some vacations this year, and I uh, thought it was time to upgrade the, uh, the camcorder, so hopefully you'll enjoy the, the better picture. Um, so anyways, that's just sort of the the channel notes. Um, what I've been doing over the last couple weeks is I've been doing a lot more kind of experimenting with the velocity painting. Kind of seeing what it can do, what it can't do. Um, I've definitely had, I think, more failed prints in the last two weeks than I've had in the last two years. But in the end, I think I've, uh, I've learned a lot and hopefully I can, uh, through my mistakes, uh, save some frustration uh, for you when you try to do some of these techniques. So one of the things that I was um, found out is that speed really matters, especially when you're printing vases or you know cylinders or something like that. If you can imagine when you're kind of going around, there's a lot of uh, centrifugal force, and so with the velocity painting, changing the velocities, it's really kind of you know if you have if you set your speeds pretty high, it's a lot of mass to sling around in a quick period of time. For example, I have these two prints, they're exactly the same, except the one on the right was printed with a top speed of 60 and a low speed of 20, and this one was printed with a high speed of uh, you know, millimeters per uh, second, and this one was with a high speed of 24 millimeters per second and a low speed of 8. And you can definitely tell that the one on the right is really kind of muddled, I mean, you really can't even really see the emblem, and the one on the left came out, you know, really, really well. So, uh, now I found that with, with, if you're doing something kind of just flat, the speed doesn't matter as much, but definitely if you're doing a vase or a circumference, you want it to be slow. And if you don't do it slow, it's just kind of, kind of mashed together. Um, the second thing that I found is that when it does the velocity painting, it converts your photo or whatever it is into a grayscale. But I really am having a hard time seeing any kind of gray. It's definitely it's black or it's white. So when you process your images, you just think black and white. Don't think of uh, grays. Like for example, on um, you know this this emblem came out pretty well, but this area is a gray and this area is a lighter gray. And you can't tell the difference between that and the outside. And in everything I've tried, I really am not seeing much of a difference with a gray compar compared to white. So um, I haven't really seen, you know, if when you uh, get your, uh, whatever you're preparing to do the velocity painting, I think if you just think black and white, it's going to turn out what, what it's, it's going to look like what is in your image. And if you try to do gray, it's just going to not really be as, as uh, crisp because um, it's not really going to pop out. The other thing that I tried is, okay, uh, most of this we're doing with uh, translucent um, filaments. You know, what happens if you try to do it with kind of more opaque filaments? Now, I personally have a whole ton of opaque filaments, and I only have 
two colors, and well, in fact, I only have one color of translucent, and I have kind of a, a natural uh, PL, uh, PLA, so that, those are the only two translucent colors that I have. So I kind of found that the, um, the black and the white um, really, I mean, you can kind of see that it's raised, but it really doesn't really come through the image unless you have it really well backlit. Um, like if you had like a, a, like a candle, like a, not a candle, but like those LED candles, you certainly wouldn't want to put a real candle in here. Um, now the gray, eh, gray wasn't too bad. You can kind of see a little bit. So anyways, um, it definitely is, is unless you have a, a lighting source behind it to shine through it, um, the opaques aren't going to work as well, nearly as well for the glossy painting as the uh, translucent filaments. Uh, I've got some ideas on maybe how to, you know, work with that a little bit more, uh, how to maybe add color to like the clear, um, but that'll probably be the next video. Um, another thing that I've been trying is um, I really like having, uh, doing, uh, lithophanes, or lithophanes, however, uh, you want to pronounce it. Um, that's where, and I have an example here, um, if you look, it's a, you have a, it, it's a depth thing, so, uh, where you want it darker, it prints thicker, and where you want it lighter, it prints thinner. And, uh, let me grab my lamp here, and then hopefully this will show up on the camera. If you light it up from behind, you can see that it lights up in the picture, and it's really, really kind of a cool effect. Um, but it does take a bit of a trial and error to get the um, to get it to turn out right. Um, so I thought, okay, well maybe we can try to do sort of the same effect with the velocity painting. So I've been doing some experimenting with that, and I still have some to go. I have still some more ideas on what I can do. But what I tr what I did here is I did a um, so I did a stand up so it it uh, has a um, a stand and what I what, the reason why I did that is um, I first tried to print it flat but I had a few issues especially since that first layer is so smashed into the into the build plate it doesn't do as good of a job you know kind of giving that you know the view of the velocity painting so I did it standing up and this one turned out pretty well. And again, with this one, I took the photo that I had and I just converted it to black and white. I tried to do it with just a grayscale and it just sort of all kind of blurred together. Now granted, this particular one was a pretty complex photo. The, uh, the shirt on my daughter was very you know, busy, um, so that probably you know didn't help. But converting it to black and white definitely um, definitely uh, helped out to make it, you know, kind of a more clear image. Um, but I still have some other ideas on on, uh, on what I want to do with that. So I think I'm probably going to have maybe one more one more video on the Velocity Painting. I've got some ideas still. Um, and then uh, after the Maker Fair, I think I'm going to start, you know, kind of doing what I was originally going to do about a month ago before I kind of found out about the Velocity Painting and having so much fun with it, is to, to do the video on the clock, which I obviously want to include some video footage from the uh, from the Maker Fair and start doing some of the tutorials on some of the other techniques that I do. So anyways, um, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, put them down below in the comments. Um, thank you for all the people who have viewed the first video, the Velocity Painting 101. Uh, it's been on the, uh, on the help page of the Velocity Painting, you know, website. And I've gotten over 500 viewer, uh, views for that, so thanks everybody for watching, and I hope you, you learned something from it, because I really think this is a cool technique once you kind of get a handle on it. Um, so if you like the video, you know, give it a thumbs up, and uh, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for stopping by, and have fun printing.